In this two-minute Tuesday, I'd like to give you the tools to develop Revit content for your projects, focusing on consistency. I will also share the trick I use to make it easier for my team to use this content. Hi everyone, Alberto here with BIM Lounge. Don't forget to subscribe for weekly BIM productivity videos. Now, certain families need to be developed in the same common environment, say for consistency of parameters. Think of walls, doors, even toilet accessories. Now, I call this common environment a container file. Now, let me show you how to create one and how to use it. So the whole point about developing materials in a separate file, for example, this container file, is because you can work out parameters like materials, naming conventions, and so on. And then of course, to do this, you can use the material browser, and that way you can name your materials so that they're easy to search and easy to browse. Now, the other advantage of having a material container file is that you can visualize materials, of course, in 3D. Now, if you zoom in, you're able to see, of course, the material category, but also the materials. And in this case, I created 3D text so that I could easily walk this model and visualize the 3D in realistic. And this is the first level of material vetting. Another way to check and develop your materials is to get it in a more realistic view like Enscape. Now you see that, of course, developing materials like this and seeing the changes in a realistic mode in real time is very powerful. Now the furniture and equipment container file is really not that special, but I wanted to show you some of the advantages of using one. For example, you can group pieces of uh, furniture, equipment or casework by group so that they're visually easy to see and grab, put in your project. One thing that I really like is to develop materials and verify materials in a separate file other than the template. Think about material consistency. How many times have we worked with a furniture that has default as material and maybe not all the geometries have a material assigned to them. So I think this is the right place to do it so that when all the materials are consistent, you can transfer them safely to your template and know that they're done. Now, a good place to start would be the development of a small restroom so that you can start loading and developing your first families and work out the naming convention for the description and the type mark, which in this case will serve to indicate the tag. And then of course, this gives you the opportunity to make sure that all the elements tag correctly with the right font and size and schedule correctly. Now, one thing to say is that, yes, you could then save these families out as RFA files. However, some of these parameters won't get saved when you save the families out. So another interesting role of the container file is that you can store these parameters within this file and then copy these families directly to your live project, keeping those parameters. Now, of course, in this file, you can also work out the actual schedule that will be used in your project so you can simply copy paste this schedule into your life project but also consider that the working schedule is much more complex it has many more parameters for example including uh, parameters like assembly code that you may not necessarily want to see in the final product but they're essential in this file so that you can gather all the families and work out all these parameters consistently now, another good reason to use a restroom container file is that you can work out your layouts also in terms of uh, local regulations and accessibility. And then once you created a few restroom layouts, you can build on top of those and uh, create as many similar layouts as you can, considering all the different situations that you may have in your projects. The goal here is to make sure that you have enough room in your new building for the restrooms. Again, a way to use these layouts would be to group them, create groups of individual layouts, and then copy these groups to your live project. 
Now, if you've done this correctly, you should be able to see these layouts exactly as they are right now and all the functioning parameters that allow you to tag and schedule all the families correctly. Now, of course, working in Revit implies that you should take advantage of the 3D component. So as you develop families, you should also keep in mind that all these elements should be able to be imported at the right placement height. So if you place something like a mirror, either in 3D or in plan, you should be able to place it at the correct height based on your standards. And then of course, another critical component of this exercise is to ensure that all the materials are consistent throughout the project so that all these families show correctly and consistent in your life project. And then of course, as you need elements for your project, you can open a container file and uh, grab what you need. And for that purpose, I hit Control N to start a new project. But instead of starting a new project, in this case, let's try and bring in a fill pattern. I'm going to create a new project, hit OK. And now I can uh, grab this custom pattern, copy it to my current project. And now it's loaded into my current project. Now, let me know if you have any questions and also let me know if you have other ways to produce structured content for your projects. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.